The next uh, item on the agenda, we have uh, an individual asked to speak to the board for visitor statements, uh, Mr. Levin. Uh, I don't see anyone else who is uh, in the audience to speak. And uh, Mr. Levin said 15 minutes or less would do it for him. Is that, is that, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. So just state your name and in general where you live, sure. like usual. Uh, Sam Levin, Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, I read the article in the landmark, including the comments made by the president of the teachers union to the school board, recommending that the school district hire more teachers. The landmark reported that Ms. Casson told the board that large class sizes are hurting the school academically and in other ways. The article further reported, and I quote, after the meeting, school board president Mike Welch noted that the contract with the teachers expires at the end of the 2015-2016 school year and that the board is willing to discuss adding more teachers. However, President Welch challenged the union to come up with ways to pay for new teachers. Here's what I want to know. Why is the board president making it the teacher's job to come up with ways to pay for new teachers? Teachers are hired to teach. Administrators are hired to manage. What are we paying the superintendent, the other administrators, and outside financial consultants to do? Why is the board saddling the teachers with the responsibility to find a solution to the problem we elect a school board that hires a superintendent to resolve? In fact, we're paying Superintendent Stinkus over $195,000 a year. We're paying equally good salaries to other administrators. And we're paying lucrative contracts to outside consultants to find fiscal, fiscally responsible ways to pay for new teachers. Unfortunately, these individuals are not performing what they are being paid to do. Therefore, the board expects the teachers to pick up the slack. Effective leaders would fire these individuals for not doing their job rather than responding to the teachers' legitimate concerns with flippant remarks made by the school board president challenging the teachers to do the job of the administration. Instead of spending money where it's most effectively spent in the classroom, the board wastes our tax dollars on a monstrous, expensive, and toxic athletic facility. The board further wastes our tax dollars on funding a lawsuit against the village of Brookfield over a stupid parking lot. And now the board has decided to further waste our tax dollars by awarding bonuses to non-performing administrators on top of the exuberant salaries they are being paid despite falling scores on various achievement and aptitude tests. This board is clearly mismanaging the operations of the school and somebody better start doing something about it quickly. The landmark also reports, according to President Welch, negotiations are right around the corner. If the Riverside Brookfield Education Association wants to hire more teachers and lower class size, then they need to present how to help the board achieve this goal. I would welcome that discussion. However, emptying the savings account is not the responsible course of action. Excuse me, but how arrogant of a comment is that, emptying the savings account, in light of the school board wasting millions of dollars on a toxic athletic field, wasting tens of thousands of dollars on a lawsuit for a stupid parking lot, 
and paying generous salaries plus bonuses to Superintendent Skinkis and other administrators as incentives for them to do the job they're hired to do. Great salaries and pride should be sufficient incentive for the administration to do their job. Why not pay bonuses to the teachers if test scores improve? If anyone should receive bonuses for improved test scores and other academic achievements, it is the teachers for teaching and the students for learning. I know you can't pay students for their performance, but you could create an incentive program that would invest resources in the classes attended by the successful students. Perhaps the students then would take the test seriously. That would be an incentive program that would pay immediate and future dividends rather than a bonus program that rewards cronyism. Speaking of cronyism, I encourage the landmark to file with District 208 a request under the Freedom of Information Act seeking all communications between the administration past and present and school board members past and present pertaining to the bonus program referenced in the landmark article last week to discover the basis for this ludicrous and thus far ineffective bonus program. The landmark further reports the district's outside financial advisor projected that Riverside Brookfield High School could face an operating deficit of $340,000 by fiscal year 2017 and a deficit of nearly $2.7 million by 2021. It is absurd, it is outrageous, it is scandalous for the board to be projecting these losses after the millions of dollars the board extravagantly spent on a, an athletic field that is harming our children in more ways than one, after the tens of thousands of dollars the board is wasting on a lawsuit against Brookfield due to the administration's ineptitude in dealing with the county, the village, and the zoo on the parking fiasco, and after the thousands of dollars the board is squandering by rewarding administrators with bonuses for not doing their job. In the private sector, if someone is not performing their job, they're terminated. To the contrary, RB is offering more money to administrators who are not doing their job. I have a better incentive program for Superintendent Skinkis and the other administrators. Fire them if they don't do the job. A creative incentive program would be to pay the administration and pay the teachers a bonus if students don't make racial slurs, if students don't fight, and if students don't bully. The board should implement a bonus program that promotes civility in addition to promoting higher test scores. Common sense tells me there is a direct correlation between students acting civil and student achievement. I also have an idea on how to re reduce large class sizes and increase student aptitude. Have the administrators teach a class or two. In the 70s, my wife attended a high school similar in size to RB. Her high school had a superintendent, an assistant superintendent, a principal, and a dean. To the contrary, Riverside Brookfield High School, a high school with approximately 1,500 students, has a superintendent, a chief financial officer, a principal, four assistant principals, and three deans. That's 10 administrators. RBHS is so top heavy that the student is capsizing, that, excuse me, that the school is capsizing both academically and socially. In response to my comments, some people might say times are different, and they're right. In the 70s, my wife's high school, under the leadership of her father, who was a member of the school board for 26 years, balanced its budget and operated in the black every year. Another difference is that in the 70s, high school football was played on grass instead of artificial turf and toxic crumb rubber. Lastly, this board better recognize and accept the school district's changing demographics before your Norman Rockwell community becomes nothing more than a Potemkin village. In fact, it may be too late, as evidenced by the swastikas painted on the Lionel Road home in Riverside 
on Christmas Day. Does anyone have any questions of me? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Moving on the agenda at this point, uh, we will ask for any additional discussion items that wish to be added to the agenda for tonight. 